Dr. Hovind, we're ready for your opening statement. Did I get it? All right, it's an honor to be here in Canoga Park, California, and it's an honor to defend the position that the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate, and that uh, the evolution theory, as taught in our schools, is one of the dumbest and most dangerous religions in the history of planet Earth. So, to defend my position, or state my position, I believe the Bible is literally true. My name is Ken Hoban. I taught high school science for 15 years, and now for 16 years I've been doing seminars on this topic, and uh, I believe the Bible is true. A quick introduction to the family. I have a wife, uh, 31 years, been married, three kids, all married, uh, three and a half, or four now, grandchildren, just had number four here a couple days ago, and hopefully about 20 more coming. Um, this is early got five minutes, let's define the positions. I believe the Bible is literally true. It teaches that very clearly that the earth mind bound all through nature. I predict there will be thousands of symbiotic relationships. The Bible teaches everything was created within six days of each other. Plants, animals, everything created in a very short time frame. Well, we find all over nature literally millions of examples of what are called symbiosis relationships, where certain plants require certain animals to pollinate them, or certain animals require certain plants to survive. How on earth did these things evolve independently? The evolution theory has a hard enough time getting anything to evolve, not to mention the fact that there is no evidence of anything ever, ever evolved. We don't ever see anything change. You know, dogs produce dogs every time. But yet, this, to get them to evolve symbiotically is absolutely ludicrous to believe something like that can happen. I predict, based on the Bible teaching that it was made in six days, there will be limits to the variations. The Bible says they're going to bring forth after their kind. And that's exactly what we see. Sure, you get a lot of varieties, big dogs and little dogs, but you never get something other than the kind. So that's a prediction. Lots of different varieties out there, but clear limits. And a five-year-old can tell you if that's a dog or, or a whale. I mean, they know the difference, okay? I predict, based on the Bible teaching, that there will be a purpose to life, a reason why we're here. Based on the assumption that the Bible is true, I think we can make the prediction that uh, the non there will be non-material things in this world, things you cannot put in a jar and hold, things like love, sense of justice, mercy, innate knowledge of right and wrong, a conscience, and absolute truth. How would any of those come about via an evolution theory, with the evolution process? Okay? I predict there'll be a way to find the will of the Creator. The Creator of this universe left behind information that we can find Him and find what He wants us to do. Maybe there'll be messengers they don't send out like prophets and priests and preachers and evangelists. Maybe there'll be a book that he leaves behind. And I take this book right here, the Bible, to be literally true. I think Genesis is historical fact. It is not mythology as some people would teach. Okay? I predict there'll be an afterlife and an accounting one day to stand before God. The Bible teaches before the flood came, the people lived over six or over nine hundred years. That's what the Bible says. Now, based on that, I think that is historically accurate. They did live to be 900 years old. We can make some predictions, okay? I would predict that we'll find lots of legends of a creation story in cultures all over the world that have no influence by Christianity. And I predict we'll find evidence of cultures teaching about something what is called the Golden Age, when people used to live to be nearly a thousand. And sure enough, that is precisely what we find as we search through history and ancient cultures. They taught that there used to be a time when man lived to be a really, really old age. I predict there'll be skeletons found of people showing signs of great age, such as larger brow ridge and larger jaws. People that lived longer before the flood probably got bigger. I predict there'll be biological problems today, like wisdom teeth, which is often a problem for 60% of the American population anyway, because that's evidence man used to be larger and you needed that last tooth to come in by the time you're 18 or 20. It's not evidence of evolution, it's evidence of design that is degenerating. Okay? I predict there'll be a universal longing for things to be restored to the Garden of Eden conditions. What difference does it make if you believe in evolution? Well, if evolution is true, how do we tell right from wrong? If evolution is true, death brought man into the world. If the Bible is true, man brought death into the world. These two views are polar opposite. Somebody's wrong. We'll find out today. Thank you. Mr. Callahan, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Rasmussen for allowing the debate, and everyone on the staff has been very helpful and pleasant. Uh, Tim and Charlie and Roland Jr. I want to thank Dr. Hoven for answering my letter on his radio program and inviting me to debate. Also speaking with me on the radio show. And I've enjoyed listening to his radio show and his sense of humor. 
Um, Genesis, history or myth? I would say that it's neither history or myth, but before we address that issue, I have some low tech here compared to Dr. Hovind's high tech. Does anyone know what this is? Anyone want to take a guess? Well, this, uh, this rather evolved, sophisticated skull over here, that's a modern human skull here. Can everyone see it pretty well? And this is a female skull of the modern human. And this skull over here, which is like very brutish and primitive looking, well, that's also a modern skull, but that's a male skull. So women, if you ever thought you were living with a, a caveman, that's, uh, that's evidence. All right, the, uh, the Johnny Carson would have a little joke about that. Joke not going over as well as he thought. But at any rate, I would say that um, Janus history, it, it, it's neither, it's a model. It's a model for the physical universe and the spiritual universe and how they relate to one another. And they cor correctly identify God, Satan and man and many of the important relationships between the three. And through the, uh, through the ages, and especially in our modern time, this is an age of reason we're living in, which you all know, and we've all heard of the scientific me method, observation, reality theory, and we've progressed a great deal in our knowledge of the universe and of science. We wouldn't be able to go to the moon or send spacecraft past the, past the outer planets or detonate nuclear weapons if we didn't understand science very well in the physics. By the same token, we've also learned a great deal about um, archaeology and the Bible. And Jesus still stands the test of time. He is deity. He's God. And I'm sure all of you are very familiar with Josh McDowell's famous book, Evidence That Demands Verdict. So Jesus stands as God historically and through the evidence and through the scientific method. But by the same token, we have learned a great deal about the universe. And we know that, we know now that the universe is pretty much what secular scientists say it is. It's billions of years old, and it contains billions of galaxies, and, and so forth. And we evolve, just as secular scientists say. Now, that presents, I know, a number of issues, theological issues, such as sin and death. Well, death particularly before the fall. Um, it also presents issues because there probably is life on other planets, life out somewhere in the universe. And there was animal suffering before man. So how do we reconcile that? Well, I think we have to say Satan. We know Satan's ancient. But if Satan existed before the Big Bang, it was a great spiritual universe, which we all agree on, that God created. And that fell. And then the material universe, which is fundamentally perverted, was to follow we're still sinners, we still need Christ's sacrifice. Now, there are, oh, before I go on, let me give you a little about, bit about my background. Um, I graduated from Berkeley in astronomy and physics. I worked at JPL for about a decade and in our space program and in other aerospace endeavors and top secret programs. We even worked at the F-16 a little for about 20 years. I was fortunate to save and invest well enough that I was I could retire early from my career and concentrate on my ministry. Um, I was fortunate enough to co-author some papers that were published in scientific journals and also author uh, some papers. I have them up here. Um, I wrote one of the more popular uh, freeware programs on the internet. If you've ever run on the internet, just type in Grand Tour, all one word, Grand Tour on the search engine. And one of my software, well, my, my software program will come up. That was largely done at JPL. Um, there are a number of evidences uh, for creation and for evolution. I hope to get into those soon and present them, but my time is up uh, at this point.